Hi everyone, it's Owen again from Sea Castle, and we are going to finish up our series on the Competitive Shopper app today by taking a look at a reporting solution. And it's not enough just to capture data on what uh, we've done. We also need to be able to get some insight from that. And if you recall, we had previously put together a uh, shopper app with uh, several screens on how to uh, uh, you know, capture images and, and comments and store those uh, in a uh, um, storage container other than the default collections that come with the out of the box templates. And so now we are in Power BI to craft together a solution, a reporting solution uh, that integrates with Power Apps. And that's what we're going to show you in this video here is how to build that integration. And so we have a couple of data visuals. Uh, we have in this case here, it's a matrix. If I click there, you'll see over in the the visualization pane, it says that's a matrix and you see the fields that are referenced for that there. And if you wanted to add your own, you simply click in the canvas space, uh, click on the matrix icon, and then you would just start to add whatever fields you would like to see. And in this case, so uh, it would be the title, for instance. So you see the title coming up with uh, the Fabricam and Johnny Come Lately, and then the subtitle would fall underneath that. And uh, if I was to expand those out, you'd see the detail that comes along with that. So that's how we built the, the matrix uh, visualization that was there. Uh, this visualization that's here is simply a um, table. And uh, again, if I want to add my own table, I can simply click in the canvas area and add the visual. Or if I've added another visual that I mistakenly didn't mean to have as a matrix, but I wanted as a table, you can change it on the fly. Um, and the neatest visual on this particular page, in my opinion, is the, the, the graphic that we have in the center here, which is a, a combination um, a line and a cluster bar chart. So the line shows us the total number of visits and the cluster columns show us, as you can see by the color coding here, the number of visits at the Bellevue campus, East Coast, uh, the Foggy Bottom, and uh, ultimately the IB new location that's there. And so over time, we'll see some interesting trends that are going on with uh, with those particular uh, uh, data values and the number of visits that are being done per month and, and per site there. So we can get some meaningful insights taking a look at just the picture from the graph. And maybe we would like to include include some uh, functionality that allows us to interact with these uh, these site location reports. Maybe we want to attach our own comments to a, a note on one of the site visits that's there. Uh, and so we don't want to have to force our users and our executives to leave the experience here in the Power BI. Uh, we want to give them a holistic uh, experience where they can accomplish what they'd like to do without leaving the screen here. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to add a Power App for Power BI. And we click in the, the Canvas area uh, to get some uh, blank real estates, if you will. And then we click on the Power Apps Power BI uh, widget in the visualization panel that's there. And then uh, important uh, points is to make sure you capture all the data values. Oops. Important points is to make sure you capture all the data values that you would potentially like to work with while you are in the Power Apps um, integrated experience. Because when we add this in just a moment, we are going to uh, create a data set essentially out of the choices that we've made here. So you can see listed here under the Power Apps data section of this visualization uh, that we have chosen uh, quite a few fields actually to be included with this. And we could create an entirely new Power Apps at this point by clicking the Create New button, which would incorporate all of these data fields into the Power uh, in Integration object that we're going to see in a, in a moment. But we have that existing demo uh, shopper app that we put together. So let's choose that, and then we're going to add that. And really important to finish this all up, we need a purple box here to go to the Power App Studio so that we get 
um, the magic of Microsoft to wire up everything behind the scenes for us so that we have that nice robust data set waiting for us. And we are on the home screen here and I'm going to create a new blank screen. So let's create just this new blank screen and give it a full gallery list. And this is what the default out of the box experience looks like for that new blank screen. So one of the things I'll warn you about uh, as you start working with this template here, uh, the icons that you see on the page here are not wired up to do much of anything beyond um, working within the pane that uh, the screen that it's on. Um, so you you couldn't create a new uh, record at this point by clicking this plus sign here because uh, when you select it, all you get is a false response. So there's nothing um, behind the substance, if you will, of the framework that we have in place. Uh, the sort function uh, will work depending upon uh, uh, the, the content that's within this uh, gallery that's here. If I click on the gallery, you see that it does not have a data source. If I look at the attributes and the properties window over on the right, um, and if I look at the uh, uh, items uh, in the edit window, in the edit bar, uh, we see that there is uh, a custom gallery sample. So this is the default experience out of the box for Microsoft when you add a blank uh, a gallery that's there. So if I wipe all of this out, you'll see the content in the gallery disappear. And I can, at this point, choose the items to make reference to this thing called the Power BI integration. And if I click the dots, we see that we have the choice for data. And when I uh, tap on enter there. Now I have a um, a search or not a search, but a gallery uh, view of all the data that's included in the Power BI integration uh, dot data object at this point. Screen and let's rename the screen just so I uh, keep this intact in terms of uh, I mean, which one is which. So this is the uh, So when we click on the uh, the PBI video button, we want that to navigate to the Power Power BI video reporting screen. And let's give that a transition cover right. OK, so let's prove to us that that works. We click there. We go to this blank page here. We click on that circular arrow. It takes us back to this page. So this should be good enough for us to at least just test the Power BI integration. Save that, so file save. And again, we're going to publish that. Publish this version. OK, and now that we've published that version to Power BI here, and we are going to publish our uh, dashboards, uh, excuse me, our report from Power BI. And I already have an existing copy of this uh, up in the environment, so I'm simply going to replace that. And after we have replaced that, we'll go up to the service and take a look at it and see how well that works for us. So we're launching the Power BI service here. We see the report popping up with the visuals, and there is the Power Apps populating from the uh, the main page here. If I click on the Power uh, BI video, what have you, we see all of the the records that are being brought back, right? Because nothing's being filtered on this page that's here. At this point now, when I click on an of these uh, visualizations, you see the cross filtering working in the Power Apps as well. So if I'm interested in seeing all of the Fabricam, for instance, uh, information and visits, I could do that. And at this point, if I look over in my Power Apps gallery, I can scroll up and down through the listing that's there and see only the Fabricam information. I stop uh, highlighting the fabric cam and just click on the Johnny come lately information. We see just a couple of visits that are there and you see that there's still some warts in the gallery that's there because 
uh, not all of the data values that uh, have been stored have uh, clean information about the title and the subtitle uh, fields, for instance. Um, and the, the title banner of this page doesn't reflect the same uh, look and feel that we saw from the rest of the, the app that we tried to put together here where we had, uh, again, that, uh, that amber or red type of uh, banner with the, the, the theme that we had going across all the various different screens there. So it might be helpful to go ahead and keep the different uh, formatting, if you will, with this screen that's meant to be used within the Power BI page where it's filtering on the Power BI information, because that way you'd very clearly know uh, within your Power App app um, which screens are relevant uh, to having content filtered by Power BI. Click on any one of these visuals here in, that we have in the Power BI canvas. Uh, it's going to be reflected in the filter that we see uh, where we are filtering against the uh, just the items that are in the Power BI integration data object. All right, so really simple, straightforward, easy to use. So if you recall what we've done over the past four videos, we first took an out of the box template item from um, uh, Power Apps, the site inspector, and we uh, converted the data sources to use uh, SharePoint list, and then we threw in some customizations to the, the, the galleries, and then we built a, a reporting solution here that we then integrated with Power Apps. So I've shown you from beginning to end using an out-of-the-box template how you can do this for yourself. I do want to point out to you that I did see some other people doing a lot better, higher quality production uh, objects than what I put out for this. So there is a uh, uh, presenter by the name of April Dunham who uh, did a really nice presentation and video on the Project Oakdale inspection template. This shows you how to use everything that we've talked about within Teams. So if you are interested in taking the concepts that I've shown you and uh, doing a really nice, robust job with uh, a site inspector templates uh, piece of functionality, by the way, uh, April does a very good job of explaining it in Teams. So it's the Project Oakdale inspection template uh, that I'll direct you to for that. Otherwise, uh, if you found the information that I shared with you to be helpful, go ahead and click on subscribe because we'll continue to put out uh, videos use for the general public and that our customers might be interested in. And thanks again for coming along. Bye.